Tell me one thing. <laughs> What's repugnant mean? <laughs> Hey guys, Ash here with Watch Mojo, and today we're gonna be looking at the 10 things Dragon Ball wants you to forget about Goku. What do you want? That's right, for this list, we're gonna be looking over the facts, plot lines, and attributes about Dragon Ball protagonist Goku, which fans and the franchise itself have often glossed over or tried to hide. If there's an embarrassing Goku fact whose power level is too big for our scouters to detect, please let us know in the comments below. And of course, if there's a Dragon Ball list you want to see, go to my Twitter at AshJBo and let me know. Number 10. His Father's Ocean Dub Backstory Goku's father's name is Bardock. In the early Ocean Group dubs of Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta tells Goku, while he's fighting him, about a technique for allowing Saiyans to transform into their enormous monkey forms without a full moon. It was your genius father who invented this little technique. He also claims that it was Bardock who devised this technique. Vegeta also throws shade at Bardock's abilities as a warrior while complimenting his intelligence. Your father was an average fighter, Kakarot, but he was a brilliant scientist! Not only is this a complete invention of the Ocean dub, it's also directly contradicted by Bardock's backstory. The guy may have been a capable fighter and wise enough to see Freezer was up to no good, but calling him a scientist seems like quite the stretch. Why should I? They'll just send him away. What's the use? Number 9. He was a crybaby. All babies cry, but Goku crying had a particularly unfortunate and embarrassing side effect. In the original Broly film, we learn that the eponymous legendary Super Saiyan once shared a nursery with Goku. Despite Broly being born much stronger than Goku, he was traumatized from an early age by Kakarot's cries. I could barely control him in front of Kakarot. Wait a second. Could that really be it? This led Broly to fly into a berserker rage as an adult. As cool as Broly is, this is kind of dumb. It certainly isn't a good look for Goku either. <laughs> you don't see that every day. So, when Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama decided to adapt Broly for Dragon Ball Super, he understandably rewrote the character's backstory, removing Goku from it entirely. Few, if any, tears were shed by anyone. <laughs> Number 8. He nearly died from stupidity. When Trunks comes back to the past to warn Goku and company about the android threat, he also tells Goku that he'll die in the future of a heart virus. Fortunately, Trunks also gives him medicine to cure the ailment. Here you go. Take this, man. For your health. My health? It's an antidote. Of course, travel to the past causes the ripple effect of Goku not contracting the illness until months after he originally did. However, rather than keep the medicine that a stranger from the future said could save his life on him at all times, or taking it immediately, Goku is left gasping and dying at the worst possible time, in the middle of fighting androids. Great. Now what? Oh man, that's too much! Sure, Goku's absence does give us some great fights, but it's still an idiotic move on his part. Yes, that's it! But it's happening much later than the boy from the future said it would! Goku just thought he'd made a mistake, but somehow his visit has already changed history! Number 7. He's never defeated Vegeta. That's right, never! At least not in a serious fight. The franchise and fans may see Goku and Vegeta as rivals, with Goku as the stronger and Vegeta as the frustrated second fiddle, but the truth is, Vegeta isn't as far behind as he or the audience think. Their iconic first fight on Earth concluded with Goku mangled on the ground and his son and friends left to pick up the pieces. <laughs> Sure, Vegeta retreated, but he was in much better shape than Goku. Their second fight ends in a stalemate, since Boo's awakening leads them to calling it off. Yeah! 
Super also sees the two spar several times, but we don't get anything definitive. Bottom line, popular perception of Goku's superiority to Vegeta is flawed. Ring it! <laughs> we'll never stop getting stronger. Yeah! Of course we won't. Only a fool would put limits on the strength of the Saiyan race. Number six, everything about Dragon Ball GT. If the Dragon Ball franchise has a black sheep show, it's easily Dragon Ball GT. At best, people consider it a mixed bag, with a few good ideas, but mostly bad execution. Ah! What? Goku? And since the advent of Dragon Ball Super, it has essentially become non-canon. The events of Super could technically be set between Z and GT, but the power scaling would be all out of whack, and there would be a whole host of contradictions. Hey! What is going on? It looks completely different again! Overall, the franchise seems determined to supplant GT with Super as the official Dragon Ball sequel series. We're hardly complaining since Goku challenging gods and taking part in high stakes battles is a lot more fun than him being turned into a kid and touring the universe. They're in your hands now. Goodbye, everyone. Number five, instant Kamehameha plot hole. During the Cell games, Goku uses his instant transmission technique to teleport right in front of Cell to fire a Kamehameha point blank at the villain. <laughs> this vaporizes his upper body, however, he still manages to regenerate it. <laughs> Later, when Cell explodes on King Kai's planet, he again returns from seemingly fatal injuries, explaining that if one of his brain cells exists, he can regenerate. This contradicts his early injury from Goku's instant Kamehameha. It is all in here. It's part of my design. Number four, inappropriate behavior with women. Goku didn't have the most conventional upbringing. He doesn't even meet a woman until he's almost a teenager. Shame on you! While that does explain some of his ignorant behavior upon meeting girls like Bulma and Chi Chi for the first time, it doesn't excuse the fact that he does something incredibly inappropriate when trying to determine their genders. Yep, thought so. You're a girl, all right. And you'd think that age would improve Goku's behavior, but not by much. His accidental intrusion into Bulma's home as an adult in Dragon Ball Super sees him get an eyeful of Bulma as she comes out of the shower. And commenting on her breasts is just rude. Body shaming is not cool, bro. Look, I wouldn't come here just to see your boobies. Yours are too saggy now. What's wrong with you? Number three, he doesn't have as many victories as you think. It isn't just Goku's track record against Vegeta that's overinflated in fans' minds. It's also his number of victories in general. While Goku generally wrecks house in Dragon Ball, he still loses against a good number of opponents the first time he fights them. Don't Don Don <laughs> In Z, he died in the fight against Raditz, and he left it upon his son to defeat Cell. There's no point in continuing this fight, I can't beat you. And his victories in Super are few and far between. He loses or doesn't achieve a definitive victory against Beerus, Hit, or Zamasu, and it's only through teamwork that Goku is able to eliminate Jiren. Goku always wins? Hardly. <laughs> Way to go, Frieza. Number two, his goodness is due to brain damage. Goku may be as fight-hungry as any other Saiyan, but he's still generally a good person who cares for his family and people in general. However, he wasn't always. When young Kakarot was first sent to Earth, his grandpa, Gohan, originally found him as violent and willful, like most other Saiyans. Gohan tried to take care of you, but you were wild, downright uncontrollable. One day, Goku fell off a cliff and hit his head. You fell into a deep ravine and badly injured your head. When he woke up, his personality had changed to the point where he was nice. 
it's understandable why Dragon Ball would gloss over the fact that his protagonist is heroic because of brain trauma. I'm from outer space? Yes. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. He Tried Passing the Torch Goku has been the protagonist of Dragon Ball since the beginning of the story. However, Goku has tried multiple times to appoint a successor. During the Cell games, Goku steps aside so that Gohan can defeat Cell instead. You can do it, right? Uh, me? Fight with, with Cell? And after his death and long absence, Gohan is in many ways the protagonist of the story. Likewise, the end of Dragon Ball Z sees Goku eager to train Buu's reincarnation, Oob, as a potential successor for Earth's protector. Well, hold on. We're heading south, okay? Okay! However, neither of these candidates end up taking up the mantle, and both GT and Super have Goku squarely at the forefront. It wasn't broken, so they didn't fix it. Uh, He's right over there! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.